Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can determine a confidence interval for a mean using Python 3 and specifically I'm using Jupyter Lab here. Uh, I'm not going to explain too much about what a confidence interval is, what the criteria are, it's mainly about how to get one from Python. Uh, its interpretation, there are a few different um, variations in it. Uh, there are those who say that it's, well, most will say that it's um, if we take an infinite number of samples, then from a population, calculate the interval each time, then 95% of those intervals will actually contain the true population mean. Um, more information about confidence intervals on my website, uh, peterstatistics.com. And the code in short that I'm going to run over, here's the code very shortly. Um, that should actually uh, work in one go. And this gives me the lower bound and the upper bound. So I'll be going over this code in slightly more detail. First, I uh, will need some example data, so I'll be using pandas for that. Um, if you never used pandas before, you will have to first install it. Uh, then you can load an example file using read CSV, for example, because I have a comma-separated file. Um, and I'm going to be using the H uh, as my numeric field. Uh, that's a little bit tricky because it has some missing values, so I'm going to drop those. There's actually a category in there, 89 or older. I'm simply going to replace that with 89. That might not be the best thing to replace it with, but just to get a numeric field only and change all values to to numeric because it might have some apostrophes around it so I'm going to use to numeric. So that's what this snippet of code is doing. Um, we'll also need the mean function from the pandas library so I'm going to be using my field mean. I have a separate video on the mean itself um, if you want to avoid using but I already used pandas so uh, this was the easiest way to do it. There are a few other ways to get a mean uh, we also need the degrees of freedom, which is the sample size minus 1 for this test or for this confidence interval. So to get the number of items, I can use len, and then degrees of freedom is n minus 1. So that's 1968. The standard error is the um, is actually the standard deviation divided by the square root of n, but I can also use simply the side by stats sem command for that. And, and that gives me, in this case, uh, 0 0.39. We need to set a confidence level. How confident do we want to be with our interval? Well, usually the most often one seen is a 95%, so 0 0.95. That's going to be my confidence level. And then we're almost there. We need to import T from the side-by-stats module. And then finally we can get our result by using T.interval. We set our confidence level, which was the 95%, the degrees of freedom that we already stored earlier, the number of items minus 1. We needed the mean, that's going to be our location, so the mean from the sample. And the scale is our standard error, so that's why we needed that one. And that nicely gives us between 47, always round the lower bound down if you're rounding it, and the upper bound up. So even if this would have been 47.9 and I was going to round it, I would round it to 47. That way I guarantee at least 95% confidence level. Uh, the formula, if you're interested, is actually the uh, sample mean plus minus the margin of error. Uh, the margin of error is a specific t value at the alpha divided by 2 times the standard error. The alpha is simply uh, 1 minus the confidence level. So, and then we take the inverse probability density function. That sounds complicated, but we have Python, so we can do quite a lot. Uh, leave a lot of the work up to Python. So that alpha is 1 minus my confidence level. That should be 0.05. Um, I need to divide that by 2, so that's going to be done here. Uh, because I'm doing a two-sided version, uh, so I need a confidence level to both sides. Uh, the degrees of freedom, the location is 0 and the scale is 1, because actually I'm using here um, a, um, a normalized version of it, so then the location is always 0 and the scale is always 1. 
and then I use t equals the PPF that probability uh, inverse probability density function so uh, it's short for percent point function and that should give me my t value which is minus 1.96 the margin of error is then that t-value times the standard error so that's 0 0.78 and then for the confidence level I need to add and subtract this but because it's a negative one I actually gonna need to adjust this code a little bit and now it, it adds and subtracts this one to the, the sample mean and that gives me the 47 and the 49 and those two are exactly the same two as we saw here so that's probably how SciPy actually does it as well all right um, like I mentioned for slightly more information about confidence interval check my website peterstatistics.com go then to one variable scale uh, under test you will find uh, some more information about confidence intervals Hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching.